Thanks to my new feng shui compass, instead of navigating by north and south, I'm now losing my way according to wind and water. Hey, Toby. Oh, <laughs> I've got lost seven times using this compass already this morning. But you know what? When I left the loose seat up, it went crazy. <laughs> Noticing the dunce in her class, Davina takes me to a teacher. It's only the writer who invented the feng shui detective. You must be the master. You must be Toby. How are you? Thank you. That's the proper way to greet. You have been training him well. Here's mine, sir. Thank you very much. Funny. Good. Now that I've got you guys here, I've got to run, so I'm going to get you guys later, yeah? All right. Okay, so I'll see you guys around. Just Thank you, Davina. Yes. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, welcome to Hong Kong. And welcome Thanks. to the heart of Hong Kong. As Nuri guides me through a crowd of domestic helpers enjoying their one day off, he schools me in the Hello, art of changing your surroundings to create good fortune. This is um, Hong Kong Bank, one of the most expensive buildings in the world. And as you can see, it's all angular, straight lines. The most expensive uh, architects in the world as well. But near to a completion, a Feng Shui master came along got out his compass and said, uh-oh, something wrong here. These escalators need to be at a funny angle. To my untrained eyes, the escalators look a bit like a cock-up. I think uh, from the architect's point of view, he probably thinks they are a cock-up. But um, they're better feng shui this way than, uh, than straight as they were in the original design. But what this really shows is how important magic is in in, in business in Hong Kong. So, so what, 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 what am I learning? Ah, right. That's interesting. Mine seems to be pointing at you and wobbling. It's not your personality, but something's magnetic anyway. Hong Kong seems to be a materialist machine, but there are still elemental forces at work here. Feng Shui is an intuitive science, better felt than understood. Put simply, everything is related to everything. This is the standard chartered bank headquarters. It's actually designed to resemble a church, but instead of Jesus and Mary in the stained glass windows, uh, we have icons of worship in Hong Kong. As you can see, there's a, like a solid gold mobile phone with the number eight very prominently showing. I, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't trust a financial institution that puts so much faith in luck. Yeah. Is it too simplistic to say that the biggest god in this town is money? It says in the Bible, you choose uh, God or mammon, and I think mammon is actually rather popular here, so right. I have to say. <laughs> and when two such vastly different forces as money and magic collide, it can all go horribly wrong. This building behind us, that's a bit of bad luck. Diamonds are considered bad luck, and as you can see, the design of that building, what is it? It's interlocking triangles. The official residence of the Premier of Hong Kong is quite close to this. The bad luck is considered so intense that the first Chinese leader of Hong Kong has actually refused to move into that house. It's equivalent to Tony Blair refusing to go into 10 Downing Street or President of America refusing to go into the White House. He will not live in his official residence because of this building. Rather than walk up another one of those tiring hills, we take the gentleman's route to Victoria Peak to see the yin and yang of Hong Kong. And as a bonus, we get a great view of the city's spectacular smog blanket. Actually, from here you can see the, um, the convention center. So that's the one really yin building in Hong Kong. It's curved and, and, and female. A uh, gorgeous contrast to the, uh, the rest of the city. And then over there, just on the other side of the water, you see Kowloon. In fact, we should go over to Kowloon side. Uh, I'm going to a party tonight, which is uh, run by one of the owners of the big hotels on, uh, on the Golden Mile that goes down the middle of Kowloon. Uh, the Haralela family. Uh, you should come along, actually. You'll meet some interesting people there. Mm. You, you don't think it's too much, though? <laughs> I think it's over the top in the right way. So where, where are we going, then, tonight? We are going to the, the Haralela's house. This is a, a very important house in Hong Kong. If you think about it, most houses in Hong Kong are tiny, tiny little boxes. This house has, like, 40 bedrooms, so it's, um, it's wow. very special. It's a mansion. It is very much a mansion. And I noticed those two people at the door laughing at me. But that, you, yes. You're sure this I, is, I wouldn't this know, is not too much? I wouldn't much. know why, why, why they're laughing at you. I mean, See, I, so I heard somebody laughing already. Yes. Thank you. They're, not, they're not wearing fancy dress. Uh, you, yes. you said it was going to be fancy dress. I said everybody would be, but I lied. I'm Good afraid. evening. In Should India. I take my hat off? Really? Yes, yes, It no. seems rather rude. Nice to meet you. Love the hat. Thank you very much. <laughs>